What's up guys? Many of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history started out as second or third stringers. And when their opportunity arrived, they made the most of it. Think of guys like Steve Young, Kurt Warner, Aaron Rodgers, and Nick Foles. They provide hope for every backup QB out there as proof that you don't have to hold a clipboard forever. Stay patient, wait for the right chance, and before you know it, you're finally a starting quarterback. While some of the better quarterbacks in the NFL shouldn't be holding clipboards much longer, when the time comes, we love their chances of flourishing as starters with some team someday. I'm Jason Biondo, and today we present 10 backup quarterbacks who could start with other teams. Don't forget to leave your video ideas down in the comments below. We'll be looking, and if we pick your idea, we're gonna give you a shout out in the video. So you get to be famous, and that would be amazing. You could tell all your friends and family. Who wouldn't want to do that? Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications because we post videos every single day. Every day! We got new videos. Yesterday, new video. Today, new video. Three years from now, new video. Subscribe. And a big shout out to Nick Fisher for suggesting this video. Thanks, Nick. Maybe one day you'll be a backup QB. Number 10, Joshua Dobbs. The Pittsburgh Steelers have a pair of potential successors for Ben Roethlisberger and Joshua Dobbs and Mason Rudolph. The latter may have the higher ceiling, but Dobbs probably has more value right now. In the Tennessee Pro Product was taken with the 135th pick in 2017. We liked some of Dobbs' work in preseason play, and this dual threat quarterback has the proper skill set to at least challenge for a starting job one day. Big Ben has shown no signs of slowing down, so Dobbs and Rudolph may never start in the Steel City. But Dobbs, who completed six passes for 43 yards in 2018, is at least worthy of a look for teams with an urgent need for a quarterback. And of course, it never hurts spending a few years learning from both Big Ben and head coach Mike Tomlin. Number 9, Taysom Hill. The undrafted quarterback out of BYU was picked off via waivers by the New Orleans Saints in 2017. Sean Payton turned Hill into quite the weapon on special teams and for gimmick plays on offense. Hill does it all. Quarterback, wide receiver, running back, you name it. Hey, didn't Tim Tebow and Robert Griffin III experience some success behind their run-heavy schemes? Hill can really fool the opposition with his football IQ, solid arm, and excellent rushing abilities. Of course, the Saints aren't about to use Hill as a starter, but Hill might shine with a team in search of a mobile dual threat quarterback. But come on, it's Taysom Hill. Why shouldn't he start in the NFL? Hey, he's better than guys like Mark Sanchez, Josh Johnson, and Nathan Peterman. You see, there's no excuse for some teams to not go after Hill, and most of them have become desperate for a starting quarterback. Number eight, AJ McCarron. The Alabama Crimson Tide product won three national championships and was a 2013 first team All-American. However, scouts weren't so high on McCarron, and he wasn't drafted until the fifth fifth round, 164th overall by the Cincinnati Bengals in 2014. McCarron only became the starter late in 2015 when Andy Dalton suffered a right thumb injury. But McCarron won two of his three starts and led the Bengals to an AFC North Division title. He played well in the wild card game against the Pittsburgh Steelers with 212 yards and one touchdown. The Bengals fell just short of winning their first playoff game since 1990, but McCarron came way closer to winning a postseason contest than Andy Dalton or Carson Palmer ever did. McCarron saw limited action in 2016 and 17, and he would sign with the Buffalo Bills in the 2018 offseason. McCarron was eventually traded to the Oakland Raiders for a fifth round pick, and he'd only complete three passes with the silver and black. After 2018, he signed with the Houston Texans to back up Deshaun Watson. We like what we saw from McCarron in his brief stint with Cincinnati, and we do think he'd be a solid game manager with the right team. Of course, it would have to be with the right coach in the right offense as well. But down the road, a QB needy team looking for a short term solution should definitely consider McCarron. Number seven, CJ Beathard. After shining at Iowa State, Beathard was drafted with the 104th pick by the San Francisco 49ers in 2017. With Colin Kaepernick long gone and Jimmy Garoppolo still in Foxborough, the 49ers look like Beathard's team. Beathard struggled a plenty on the pretty horrible San Francisco team in 2017. But when Garoppolo tore his ACL in week three in the 2018 campaign, Beathard took over as the starter. And boy, did he ever make progress in his sophomore year. Beathard lost all five starts, but he finished with a 60.36 completion percentage for 1,252 yards and eight touchdowns. He nearly defeated both Phillip Rivers and Aaron Rodgers on the road. And if he didn't suffer a wrist injury mid-season, there's no telling how much more Beathard could have produced even though, you know, he like lost five games. The 49ers have a future pro bowler in Jimmy G and two quality backups. Beathard is resilient, talented, and young enough to be optimistic about starting one day. It won't happen in San Fran, but it's only a matter of time before another team takes a chance on Beathard. The skill set is there. Now he just needs another opportunity. Number six, Jacoby Brissett. A 2016 third round pick by the New England Patriots, Brissett had to play two and a half games in his rookie year. That's because Tom Brady was suspended for four games, while Jimmy Garoppolo suffered a shoulder injury in week two. 
suit. With Andrew Luck missing all of the 2017 season after undergoing shoulder surgery, the QB desperate Indianapolis Colts traded wide out Philip Dorsett to the Patriots in exchange for Brissett. Dorsett for Brissett. And so, despite a brutally awful offensive line, Brissett actually performed quite well on the wretched Colts team. He had 3,098 passing yards and 13 touchdowns against 7 picks, while rushing for 260 yards and 4 touchdowns. Brissett became the backup again when Luck returned in 2018, and it's a win-win for the Colts here. Their franchise QB is playing at an MVP level again, and Brissett should garner plenty of interest in the trade market down the road. It helps that Brissett got to learn from Bill Belichick and Tom Brady for one year. He looks like a solid game manager and would fit a team with a strong rushing game and elite defense. If they didn't already add a new starting QB, the Buffalo Bills, Denver Broncos, or Jacksonville Jaguars would have all been ideal landing spots. Brissett has excellent poise and looks like a future full-time starter in this league. He'll get the chance somewhere, just not with the Colts. Number 5, Nick Mullins. The Southern Miss product went undrafted, but the San Francisco 49ers signed Mullins after the 2017 draft. His hopes of becoming the starter were dashed when San Fran traded for Jimmy Garoppolo and gave him a $137.5 million contract. However, Jimmy G suffered an ACL tear in week 3 of the 2018 campaign, and C.J. Beathard injured his wrist midseason. That left Kyle Shanahan with no choice but to throw Mullins into the fire. And the undrafted product made the most of his opportunity. In 8 games, Mullins threw for 2,277 yards and 13 touchdowns, and led San Fran to 3 wins, including a big-time home victory over the NFC West rival Seattle Seahawks. Mullins looked calm and poised throughout, and he seemed like a natural fit in Shanahan's offense. He's not going to take away the starting role from Garoppolo, but there's a silver lining. Mullins probably did enough to set himself up for a starting job somewhere down the road. San Fran will be happy to let Mullins start elsewhere, especially if they're receiving a mid-round pick in return. Keep an eye on this kid. It's only a matter of time before Mullins gets the chance to start on another team. The 49ers have a top-tier trade chip here. Number 4, Tyrod Taylor. After spending four seasons as Joe Flacco's backup, Tyrod Taylor joined the Buffalo Bills in 2015 and became their starter. And let's just say that he was the best backup Buffalo had since Jim Kelly retired in 1997. Taylor never put up jaw-dropping stats in Buffalo, but he excelled as a game manager on a team led by Pro Bowl back LaShawn McCoy along with an excellent defense. Taylor went 22-20 and as Buffalo's starter over three seasons. He had 51 touchdowns and just 16 interceptions. Not bad numbers at all. Way better than you would have expected. Taylor helped the Bills reach the postseason in 2017, ending the team's 18-year playoff drought. They would unfortunately lose, and Taylor would get traded to the Cleveland Browns. Taylor lost his starting job to rookie Baker Mayfield early in the 2018 season after suffering a concussion, and the latter would hold the starting duties the rest of the way. Taylor would sign with the Los Angeles Chargers in the 2019 offseason. He's not going to start in favor of Phillip Rivers, but we do think Taylor is capable of being a starter again. He was good enough in Buffalo and had some flashes in Cleveland. We think Taylor would be a decent starter for a team like the Miami Dolphins, Oakland Raiders, or Denver Broncos. It could take some time until he starts again, but Taylor has to be patient. There's lots of time left for him to go out there and lock down a starting job again somewhere. Number 3, Blake Bortles. Oh Blake, what happened to this guy? Bortles showed signs of being a franchise quarterback in 2015 when he threw for 4,428 yards and 35 touchdowns. He regressed statistically in his next two seasons, but in 2017, Bortles and the Jacksonville Jaguars reached the AFC Championship game. They narrowly fell to the New England Patriots and expectations were sky high entering 2018. Bortles and the Jags got off to a promising start, but his play unraveled down the stretch, and he was replaced by Cody Kessler. The Jaguars cut Bortles in the 2018 offseason after signing Nick Foles. All of this happened one year after they reached the AFC title game, and after Bortles received a $54 million extension. Well, let's focus on the positives. Bortles has had some brilliant games, namely against top teams like the Patriots and Pittsburgh Steelers. He's got a nice release and pretty solid mobility, but he crumbled on a Jacksonville team that's never really Really been great on offense. Bortles signed with the Los Angeles Rams to back up Jared Goff, so hopefully Sean McVay's coaching staff can fix him. Bortles won't start over Goff, but maybe they'll repair his flaws and turn him into a better product. Kind of like what the Philadelphia Eagles did when they brought back Foles. We like a lot of Bortles' game. He just needs to be patched up a bit, regain his confidence, and cut down on the turnovers. Don't rule out this guy's chances of starting again someday. Number 2, Ryan Tannehill. He was slightly above average for the Miami Dolphins, but Ryan Tannehill just wasn't great enough to take this team to another level. Unfortunately, knee injuries in 2016 and 17 took a toll on Tannehill, who endured a frustrating 
frustrating 2018 season, which led to his release. Tannehill did help Miami reach the postseason in 2016, but he unfortunately suffered a knee injury that forced him to miss the rest of the year. His stats weren't exactly horrible either, given the lack of weapons around him. Tannehill had two 4,000-yard passing seasons and threw 24-plus touchdowns three times. Again, you'd like more from a guy who was taken with the number 8 selection in 2012. But Tannehill did have some big games in South Beach. Fun fact, he beat Tom Brady four times. We'd like to think Tannehill would be a quality starter elsewhere. But the Tennessee Titans acquired him via trade in the 2019 offseason to back up the off-injured Marcus Mariota. If the latter stays healthy, Tannehill will be holding a clipboard. It's that simple. Tannehill would certainly do better in an offense that actually had an offensive line, a Pro Bowl running back, and some decent pass catchers. He didn't have Jarvis Landry or Jay Ajayi for very long. Otherwise, who knows how much better Tannehill could have been in South Beach. Tannehill might never be a regular starter again, which is a shame. He's more than deserving of being a starter in the right system, but that chance just may never come around. Number one, Teddy Bridgewater. Well, Bridgewater is more than happy backing up Drew Brees in New Orleans, and he's seemingly content waiting for his chances to eventually take over as Saints starter. But you still have to feel sorry for Bridgewater, who missed out on three seasons of being a potential starter. He tore his ACL before the 2016 campaign and didn't return until week 17 of the 2017 campaign, where Bridgewater saw very limited action. Bridgewater signed with the New York Jets in the 2018 offseason, but he was sent to the Saints, where he remained ever since. Let's not forget what we saw from Bridgewater in his two seasons as mini starter. Bridgewater compiled a 17-11 record and had 28 touchdowns against 22 interceptions. He helped Minnesota win the NFC North in 2015, and they were a field goal away from reaching the NFC Divisional Round. Bridgewater is a solid dual-threat QB with tremendous athleticism and a nice release. He just has to stay healthy. Bridgewater passed on a chance to sign with Miami and went back to the Saints. We all know he's a starting caliber quarterback. Bridgewater knows it. The Saints know it. That's why he's waiting to take over for Breeze when the latter retires. Who knows how long that will be? But we're confident Bridgewater has yet to write the greatest chapter of his NFL career. Which other NFL backups do you think could start on another team? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and Total Pro Sports on social media. We post great content all the time. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post videos every single week. At least go check everything out. Give it a look. See what you think. And if you like it, then subscribe or follow us. Either way, you're great. Make sure to subscribe to TPS because we post videos every single day. If you want a new video every day of sports content, then subscribe right down below. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click also right down below. Why would you not want to click it? I know you like the video. Help us out. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo, and I'll see you next time. My knee.